Hi, I'm Charlotte Castle and I'm giving this workshop and I would like to just tell you about it a little bit and what we're going to do. The central idea is to realize that inner turmoil, anxiety, depression, getting totally stuck making a decision, having those endless conversations in your head, and having parts of yourself you hate or want to get rid of, are all signals that different parts of you are in conflict. Like there's an argument going on inside. And some parts are loud, some parts are pretty soft, some parts are semi-conscious, and some parts are unconscious. And that's what makes it so hard sometimes to make a decision. Now, let me give you a little example of a conversation inside that I hear pretty often, all right? I must leave this relationship. It's just not working. I'm sick. I don't like it. It's making me crazy. Oh, but I'd be alone. I've never lived alone before. What would that be like, waking up with nobody there? Oh, my gosh. Oh, and oh, I'd feel like such a failure. What would I tell my parents? And my neighbors and my friends, this is the third time a relationship's fallen apart. Oh, God. And, you know, well, what if I'm making a mistake? You know, he, he's nice some of the time. And uh, he does make money. Um, you know, maybe, maybe it's about me. Maybe if I could be kinder and sort of sweeter and not get so upset over things and just meditate more. I could meditate more. And then if I were nice like that, then maybe he'd change or maybe, maybe I wouldn't notice and maybe it'd be just okay. All right. So cut. Do you hear the different parts? Those are what usually are going on and on over and over, maybe for years. Okay. What we're going to do is sort out all the different voices from the inside that are sometimes speeding around sometimes muffled around, keep you awake, keep you lacking uh, presence with other people. So we're going to explore the different parts. And they can be an age, like I go back to three very often when I do this. They can be a feeling state. You have bursts of anger. You get irritated really fast over things. You shoot off your mouth. Maybe you clam up and can't talk. Maybe you hear all of a sudden, every time you want to do something, a critical parent, Oh, what makes you think you can do that? Yeah, right. Sure. It, it can be being charming and seductive. You learned at three years old, if you were cutesy and nice, hey, you got attention. So we're going to make friends with all these parts and understand them. And understanding, Buddhism, Zen, is what feels like love. Understanding, processing, is what can transform these parts. And we're going to find out where they get, where they got started, kind of when they came on board. Were you three? Were you eight, ten? How many years did they go on for? One I hear a lot in, in therapy, uh, more often with men, is like, don't tell me what to do. And that can come from 12 years old, 15 years old, 8 years old. It can come from lots of times. It usually comes from having over-controlling parents. So we're going to also look at what need they filled. For instance, if you learn to clam up, go to your room, and not talk, you just got quiet, well, what purpose did that solve? Well, you didn't get shamed, you didn't get shouted out, you didn't have to listen to nasty conversations between your parents. It was protective. It served a purpose that was part of survival. Okay, if you got really bold and out there, that covered up the very vulnerable part. Everything you adopted in your life is a persona was had a purpose. Now, what we're going to do is not get rid of these parts. We're going to embrace them. Because guess what? You've been trying to get rid of these for years. People say, I've got to stop being jealous or mean or short-tempered. Well, has it worked is the question. <laughs> Usually not. So we're going to find out, when did you start getting short-tempered? What's that all about? Okay, so... If we don't process and understand those parts, it's kind of like having a little kid living inside, seeing through their perspective as a scared nine-year-old, and that's how they make decisions, because they were nine. But they get frozen in time, and I'll explain a lot more about how that works in the brain. But they, they just go through life thinking 
life is as dangerous it was in, as it was in that house. Now, also some other states you may want to explore, like the fear of speaking up, the fear of trying something new, the fear of opening up to someone, and belief systems. I can't. Oh, it's too hard. I want my mommy. I didn't tell right away. That's a very little person. So we're going to slow it down, listen to every part of the conversation. I make a circle of chairs, and we have each part, each ego state, each part speak up. And then we get into a dialogue between the adult part, the wiser part, and maybe some helpers, and the other parts. And what's, so we find out what's going on and that you're not crazy inside. It all makes sense. And when people experience that, they calm down enormously inside. They're not crazy. It made sense, the things they did, the decisions they made. We help get the adult wise part in charge and help the child know you're not living in that house anymore. The, the threat has gone away. And let's get into reality. One of the principles of Buddhism is see clearly in reality. So we're going to bring up current reality. Is there something really to be afraid of here? I mean, is it a big thing? Is it life-threatening? It was when you were little. If your parents went off and left you, you couldn't cook, you couldn't buy food, you couldn't go to the store, but now you can. And the adults got to help the child understand this. So we keep looking at how is it serving you to do these things now, like be that charming, cutie person and seductive. Is that working now? How is it, you know, getting mean and sort of prickly and stuff to ward off the, the tender, soft, scared parts inside? Is that working now? Is that how you want to be now? And this will open the door to the transformation that helps you do that. Just like it's always pleasing someone, pleasing everyone, worrying about how they feel. That made sense if you had crazy parents or they were sick or alcoholic that, that um, you didn't want them to get mad at you, so you were trying to please them. That makes sense. But it doesn't make sense anymore. Now, I also work with some body awareness. So you can see when you're in a little part, you go, oh, you kind of slump. And when people get big, they get into their kind of bright side. So this can lead to significant change in a few days, in a short time of this workshop. So I'm going to go over kind of the outline of the workshop. First, we'll go over the basic principles. And you are always welcome to ask questions, make comments. We like to keep a dialogue going. I will demonstrate probably two or three times working with someone so you can really see it. And we'll go over the process that I did so you can feel it for yourself. We'll get in small groups. We'll map, have everyone can map out a conflict or a part of themselves they want to get more friendly with. And we'll have a process for doing that. I will teach you a couple tapping exercises that help uh, get to the brain and help make these shifts happen faster. One of them is the emotional freedom technique which um, really does help. So generally, we're going to make more ease inside. We're going to heal these parts. We're going to stop fighting ourselves so much. And we'll come into more ease, more empowerment, and more ability to live <laughs> with happiness in this world. And I hope you come.